My name is Rebecca Gibson. I'm a CT1 trainee in anaesthetics in Northern Ireland and I'm going to tell you a little bit about a project that I got involved with as a foundation trainee uh, which was looking at reducing fall rates in the elderly care environment. So I'll talk you through a little bit about the trust that I worked for, um, the rationale for the project and our aims. I'll talk through the audit cycles that we completed and some of the changes that we made and then a little bit about the ongoing work and some of the lessons we've learned from the project. So I undertook my project at the Ulster Hospital, um, which is part of the South Eastern Health and Social Care Trust situated in the Greater Belfast area. The Ulster Hospital, um, like I said, is part of the South Eastern Trust. It serves around 350,000 people. Um, so of all the hospitals in Northern Ireland, it has the biggest uh, proportion of the population. It's classified as a district general teaching hospital uh, with a full range of, of acute specialties. Um, it gets about 90,000 emergency department attendances per year. That's about 250 a day, so quite busy. And there are 22 wards for medicine and surgery, um, which equates to 440 beds, and 80 of those are dedicated to elderly care. While I was a foundation trainee, and the Trust ran a safety, quality and experience programme in conjunction with the Institute for Healthcare Improvement. This involved uh, monthly lunchtime teaching, some online e-learning modules and participation in a quality improvement project. This was a multidisciplinary team event. Uh, doctors of all grades, nurses, social work, OTs etc were involved and as a junior doctor it was a great opportunity for me to learn about quality improvement, to get involved and to work with staff from other disciplines. So the project I was involved with was looking at reduction of falls in care of the elderly. The rationale for this project was that falls are the most common patient safety incident reported to the, Nas the National Patient Safety Agency. Uh, over 280,000 are reported every year with uh, a cost estimated somewhere around £15 million. Pounds. Obviously falls are detrimental for the patient, resulting in injury, death, but also things like loss of confidence, independence and leading to increased hospital stays and extra treatment which has financial penalties then for the hospital. The research shows that falls can be reduced by 18 to 31 percent through the use of multifactorial assessments and interventions. So with this knowledge in mind we decided to try and reduce the falls rate in an elderly care ward by 20 percent. Just to outline our project we started with a, a baseline audit to ascertain uh, a baseline falls rate. We then made several changes. We introduced the falls care plan a falls walking stick and bed and seat alarms. We did this using Plan Do Study Act PDSA cycles and we conducted an audit after each change was made and obtained feedback from board staff. We then followed up with yearly and two yearly audits um, to assess for sustainability. We decided to focus our project on one ward, Ward 22, which is a 19 bedded unit in the Ulster Hospital and one of four care of the elderly wards. The options to obtain data for falls is limited and the literature would suggest the most accurate way to do this is to review incident report forms. So we used IR1 forms uh, to calculate the baseline falls rate of 14.7 falls per thousand patient bed days for one calendar year. As you can see from the graph the falls rate varies quite a lot month to month. Uh, literature also suggests that there may be seasonal variability in falls and for reasons like this we felt it was important to include data for a full calendar year. The first change we made then was to introduce a falls care plan. This is a form to be completed by nursing staff on admission. Uh, there are two parts. The first part you can see here. This involves an assessment um, of patient risk of falling. So it uses NIPS's four screening questions. Uh, is there a history of falls before or after admission? Are the patients worried about falling and are they unsteady on their feet? If the answer is yes to any of these questions, the nursing staff will go on to complete the second part of the form. This looks at uh, modifiable risk factors for falling. So you can see on this slide a shortened version um, of the second half of the form. I'll just pick out some risk factors for you. So for example, eyesight. Um, does the patient have poor eyesight? Can they see an obstruction? Do they, do they need their glasses on? Uh, medications, are they on antihypertensives? Are they working too well? Have they got hypertension? How, are they wearing appropriate footwear? 
Uh, patients frequently have lovely cuddly slippers with bubbles hanging off them but very impractical for preventing falls. So these just aim to identify areas of increased risk allowing the nursing staff to adapt care to suit an individual's needs. This is the completed uh, falls care plan. You can see there's some guidance beside each risk factor to um, help the nursing staff know what to look for and what to do. Following the introduction of the care plan, we did a three-month re-audit and found there'd been a reduction of 13%. Over such a short period of time, it's difficult to know if this was significant um, or just normal variation, but it was nice to see things going in the right direction. We also did a monthly review of the falls care plans um, regarding their com- the nursing staff's compliance. Um, first of all, we looked to see if the forms were in the notes and if they were appropriately completed. And second of all, we looked to see how many patients were deemed at risk based on the four screening questions. So you can see compliance was 80 to 90%, which we felt was very good, but also that the majority of the patients on the ward would be considered at risk of falls. And this obviously presents quite a challenge to the nursing staff. The second intervention we made was to introduce a falls walking stick. Uh, This is a a poster uh, in the shape of a a walking stick um, essentially a modification of the, the safety crosses which um, are widely available on wards. There's a, a box representing each day of the month. If a fall occurs on a particular day, the box is coloured red. If no fall occurs, the box is coloured green. And the aim of the poster is it's on the ward, visible to the nursing staff and acts as a visual reminder of their progress. You can see here some completed walking sticks. Um, it just gives a, a quick guide of how well things have been going recently. and. After introducing these, we did a six-month re-audit and found a 10% reduction in the falls rate compared with baseline. Again, over such a short period of time, it may or may not be significant, but still a reduction from the starting point. The third change we made was to introduce bed and seat alarms. These are fairly self-explanatory. The patient tries to get up, the alarm goes off, and hopefully nursing staff get there before a fall occurs. Appropriate patients are identified through multidisciplinary team meetings. Initially, the noise made by these bed seat alarms were, was quite a loud piercing sound. They now sing, you are my sunshine. The idea of being it's more relaxing and may even encourage the patient to sit down again. As part of the project, we also introduced post-fall guidelines. Uh, the National Patient Safety Agency uh, released a rapid response report in 2011 um, stating that the the quality of post-fall care was inadequate, particularly in medical examination and nursing observations, and recommended revision of local protocols and guidelines. As a result, the South Eastern Trust issued new guidelines focusing on head, neck and hip injuries because these were most commonly left um, undetected or received a delay in their treatment, and the Trust guidelines were based on um, NICE guidelines. So after all the changes, we conducted a one-year re-audit and found there had been a 15% reduction in the falls rate compared with baseline. It does seem to be going in the right direction, but we hadn't yet met our target. So we persisted with the changes. Uh, We listened to feedback from the ward staff, things like the falls care plan, where it should be in the notes so that it's completed and reviewed regularly, um, what's a reasonable time scale for completion. The falls walking stick, where should it be on the ward so nurses can see it, And the bed seat alarms, as I've already mentioned, we changed the the sound they make so so as not to startle patients. After persisting with the project for another year, our two-year re-audit found a 60% reduction in the falls rate. This far exceeded our expectations. On discussing with ward staff, some of the reasons mentioned were increased staff motivation, um, increased awareness of um, risk assessments and interventions. There's now a nurse falls lead. Um, who's taking over the project and she's a ward based nurse and also staff on the ward have been involved with the project and presenting it at various conferences. These figures are also um, encouraging as they suggest an element of sustainability to the project. Ongoing work then following from the success of this project. Regionally uh, there was a a fall safe project completed recently. This um, stated that there were evidence-based assessments and interventions which are capable of reducing falls, but they're poorly Im- implemented at ward level, and the Fall Safe project aims to help organisations implement these interventions in the form of care bundles or care packs in order to reduce the falls rate. Currently, uh, the Northern Ireland nursing paperwork is being standardised to create one nursing pack um, for all Northern Ireland hospitals, 
and there were 22 staff involved with uh, this falls project are now part of the team creating this regional paperwork um, particularly focusing on uh, obviously the, the falls section nationally there was a pilot audit conducted in 2011 uh, by the Healthcare Quality Improvement Partnership and the Royal College of Physicians. This looked at the feasibility of conducting a national audit looking into inpatient falls, focusing on uh, organisational structure and policies, protocols, uh, staffing, equipment, training, and they found it would be feasible to undertake a national audit um, looking at reducing falls rates. The South Eastern Trust Care of the Elderly Department will be participating in the national audit project hopefully to share the learning of the work that they have already done and also to continue with the improvement. So just to summarise then, I think some of the things we've learned from this project are that a a team approach of doctors, nurses, OTs is necessary for access. It's important to have um, staff on ward level at the forefront of this project and we've introduced a, a clinical nurse falls lead to do this. It's also important to have time to feed back to your staff and to educate and undertake any training that may be necessary. I think we've demonstrated that a multifactorial interventional programme can decrease inpatient falls and hopefully added to the body of evidence out there to say this is possible.